my channel The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro Herrera and today I'm going to be reviewing a biography of Queen Victoria which was written by Julia Baird. Its full name is Victoria the Queen, an intimate biography of the woman who ruled an empire and it was published in 2016. Before I begin though, let me just say that unless you don't want to learn anything about Queen Victoria, then beware this video, since I will be mentioning important periods of her life as well as things I learned regarding this book. I've always loved history and ever since I was 18 I've started developing this fascination for the British royal family and it started with Queen Victoria and her descendants but since last year it's also applied from William the Conqueror all the way to Queen Victoria so it really covers everyone and well this interest in the British royal family has led me to become a royalist, an anglophile and to seek as many books, movies, biographies, documentaries, series about Victoria and her relatives as I can. I've read many biographies about Queen Victoria's descendants and never really read a biography specifically centered on her life. So I realized that all I knew about this queen was through productions I'd seen of her. Stuff like The Jump Victoria, Victoria, Edward VII, Fall of Eagles, Mrs. Brown, Victorian Abdul, Victorian Albert, and Victoria and Dover. And I mean also, being a history lover and a lover of the Victorian era, one learns a lot of things, so it's not like I only knew things about her through these movies. But yeah, what finally made me decide to read a biography on her was that in September I started an online continuing education course from Oxford centered on Victorian literature. And so like, even before the course started, I've been reading a lot of English classics. So I came to the conclusion of why on earth am I not reading a biography about the woman that sort of links everything together? A woman who literally represents most of the 19th century. And and so I did a lot of research about which biography I should read and I decided to give Julia Birds a try because it had really good reviews but if anyone else knows about any other biographies on the Queen let me know so that I can check them out. As you can imagine this book covers the life of Queen Victoria from the moment she was born to the moment of her death. She lived 81 years so this book covers a lot of stuff not only about her life, but about England and its history, whether it's their kings, their prime ministers, the Crimean War, the Sepoy Rebellion, the Boer War, the foundations of World War I, as well as the expansion of the British Empire. And it also shows the Queen's relationship or acquaintances with icons such as Charles Dickens, Florence Nightingale, Alfred Tennyson, the Duke of Wellington, and many, many more. But getting back to Victoria, we see what her childhood was like, as well as her first years as Queen, her marriage to her beloved Albert, raising a family of nine children, her widowhood, her relationship with her prime ministers, with her servants John Brown and Abdul Karim, her popularity and unpopularity, her last years, and many, many more things. I really really love this biography so I give it a 5 out of 5 stars review and despite the fact that it's about 700 pages long I finished it in just 2 days because I couldn't put it down. I enjoyed the author's writing style because at times it almost seemed as if I was reading a novel because she doesn't write things as if she were stating dry historical facts. I also think that it covered almost everything about Victoria so it was a very well researched biography and as a journalist I applaud the author's skills and dedication to present to us such a thoroughly researched book. Still, I did feel that she could have covered a bit more about certain things like the Queen's close relationship to Alexandra, her granddaughter who was the last Tsarina of Russia but overall I learned so much about Victoria that I really can't complain. Also, one minor thing that almost doesn't bear mentioning is that I could tell when the author seemed a bit repetitive by reminding us something that she had already mentioned. But I guess that if someone doesn't really know that much about they need that reminder in order to not get confused with so many places and people and dates and stuff. Anyways, I enjoyed learning about all of Victoria's children because I only knew what had happened to a few of them and I was shocked to learn what Prince Albert thought of women's capability. I get that he was raised in a certain time under a certain context but I couldn't believe how much the power he gained over Victoria with time when it came to ruling. I'm not saying that he was a bad ruler but now I'm not as fond of him as a husband as I used to think he was. I also like learning that Florence Nightingale became famous during that Crimean War because I already knew about this war due to a book called The Shadow of the Moon that also covers the Sepoy Rebellion. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, you learn a lot about the Queen's relationships with her Prime Ministers and with John Brown and that always makes for a fascinating reading. For the moment though, I believe that this is all I have to say about this biography. One day I'll read more books about the Queen's life, for example, Helen Rappaport's take because I really love her as a historian and I've read a lot of books about her research of the Romanov family. But yeah, thanks so much for watching my review of this biography. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that you did. And I'd love to hear what are your own thoughts regarding Victoria, her family, this book, any other biographies about her, anything that's relevant. In the description box below you can find a link to the book's Goodreads page and well, I'm Caro Herrera, The Mental Traveler and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I'll be seeing you soon, take care and goodbye!